All right, hello and welcome to Campbell Finance. I'm your boy Campbell and welcome to the week. Welcome to Monday. Today is, of course, April Fool's Day. And initially I had some idea to play a few jokes on you guys, but I thought <laughs> April Fool's Day is bad enough to get through. Every other influencer under the sun is going to be is going to be doing silly stuff today. So I thought, let's just bring the fire as always, right? Let's bring the alpha as always. On Friday, obviously the markets were closed, but we had Powell talk and, of course, the Camel crew know that the only question worth asking is what color tie was he wearing? Powell showed up in a purple tie. Of course, purple tie means we pump. And when we take a look at what was happening in the futures markets last night, Sunday night, we saw massive amounts of green entering the space. So again, purple tie alpha is exactly that. It is indeed alpha. Taking a look at some historical data, the December low indicator is one that has been very right of late. Now, if the Q1 lows break the December lows, then we are potentially heading for trouble. If not, just like we saw in 2024, the rest of the year and full year tend to do very, very well. The rest of the year is up double digits. The past four times it occurred tells us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes walking forward. Similarly, the S&P 500 up 10% or more in Q1 also tells us to expect better than expected outcomes walking forward. Q2 does a little bit better on average, and for the rest of the year, was higher 10 times out of 11. Again, tells us to keep an open mind about seeing further upside walking forward. And fitting in with this theme of seasonality from Crypto El Prez here, green in March, looking into April, since 2013, there have been seven green Aprils and just four red Aprils. However, the upside potential in April is historically stronger than the downside. The green April's average return was over 27% for one month, remember, just one month. And a red April gives us a loss of around 6%. So is it going to be green or red? You can see here, similarly to the stock market, the seasonality for Bitcoin tells us to keep an open mind about higher prices walking forward. And this is further supported by a fantastic chart here from my brother Nasco. Nasco pointed out that Bitcoin's monthly all-time high breakout is confirmed. On a monthly time frame, we have confirmed a breakout. We should see a rapid move to the upside towards 80 to 100K, but that's not all. The move should continue well beyond that, perhaps as high as 230K. This is at least what the charts imply. Long and strong camel crew. And again, pause your screen, take a good look at this. Hard for me to suggest that with a monthly candle close above the prior all-time high, what comes next is a large-scale pullback. And something that I've been talking about over and over again is that the sentiment for the miners is still beaten down. People are calling for a $5 riot or marathon. That could be a troll, I don't know. But the point is, the miners have really upset a bunch of people. They have really beaten the sentiment down. Most people do not believe in them. And of course, that is the perfect opportunity for miners to start to climb. Not to mention, this is a seasonally strong and bullish month for the Bitcoin proxies, such as those miners. So I say, let them melt up, continue. I'm sure those miners are going to do minor things, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that managed to sell their position right before they indeed revealed the direction, as is often typical with markets. And even if you are an altcoin guy, which I'm not particularly, but the data is the data, the charts are the charts. This is usually the place where prices go vertical for the altcoin market. You can see back here, flip the Gussian channel, consolidate, boom. Flip the Gussian channel, consolidate, boom. Where are we today? Flipped it to green, consolidated, ready for that explosion higher. Now, if this happens, happy days for the altcoin crew, right? And if it doesn't, if something other than this comes next, then you can interpret that as some sort of warning sign and something potentially being wrong under the hood. For now, though, looks pretty good. We've also got this Wyckoff accumulation, sign of strength and an emergence to phase E should be set for the everything rally to continue. And if you're wondering if it's too late to buy Bitcoin at 70K, well, this person here just bought $1.1 billion worth at 70K. So is this another nation state buying? That is speculative at this moment, but a billion dollars is indeed not chump change. And with just a 2000 move higher above the current levels, we could see up to $1.2 billion worth of Bitcoin shorts getting liquidated at 72K, as you can see from this dense, yellowy green band here. Of course, if we were to trade into this level at 72K and start to liquidate these shorts, the shorts would be forced to cover. And of course, when you are forced to cover a short, you have to reverse the process by buying. Of course, that forced buying typically presents in a short squeeze. It tells us to keep an open mind about seeing fireworks this week as well. And six figures could well be coming very soon. If we hop into this chart and take a look, okay, what have we got? Very, very similar structure that last time resulted in a five wave parabola to the upside. Is this time going to be different? Can we get those five waves up? We are going to find out if we were to play out just like this, that would give us a price just over $100,000 for Bitcoin. 
and the long-term nuple, the net unrealized profit and losses at a height, which has always been followed historically by a euphoria phase. So a parabola continuation from here is to be expected, at least based on historical data, and the current high time frame test of the previous all-time high for support should hold. So we've got Bitcoin price in black at the top and the new pool in this rainbow colored chart. You can see we have gone all the way from red through orange, yellow and into green. What should historically speaking come next is that move into euphoria blue, just like we had here, which corresponded with a parabola, just like we had here, corresponding with a parabola and just like we had here, corresponding with this and of course, this. As a current left translated proponent, okay, I'm still leaning on the fact we're going to get an earlier top. Now, as always, I don't want that to happen. I would much rather see a right translated top. It would be way easier to deal with. I'm really hoping to be invalidated on this idea because like I said, it will be much easier to sell the top or at least near the top if we get a right translated cycle. But on a balance of probabilities, the expectation has been we will get an early top. That top would come sometime this year and the price is yet to invalidate that. Now, if we're going to invalidate it, we must trade sideways or down in the next few months. If we continue up, however, then on a balance of probabilities, I can only continue to accept that we are going to put in a top sometime this year, perhaps as early as summer. And if you think that's early, well, take a look at this, because many are tragically failing to recognize that the current parabolic surge is not the dawn of a fresh cycle, but rather the culmination of a 15 year journey. Now, if you think I'm ridiculous for calling for a top sometime in the middle of this year, this implies that we will be at 200k ish, maybe slightly higher as early as the halving, which is just around three weeks time. So can we do a two to three X from current price levels in 19 days before then violating this parabola? That's to be determined. Overall though, I don't think we're gonna to be too much different from this. I think worst case scenario, this is gonna unfold, but only it's gonna be a couple of months behind the suggested and implied schedule from this chart. Tells us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes walking forward. Of course, if new data presents, if we violate this parabola by going sideways or down from here, then we will be able to shift our stance. But all the while we keep going into berserk mode, all the while we keep following a parabolic advance to the upside, and all the while it starts to get more and more explosive to the upside, I will continue to accept this as the base case hypothesis. And if you are wondering, like me, when a recession might hit, a very good indicator, as Tony points out, is the quarterly golden cross in the Dixie. This will likely take many months to play out and likely would require a much higher Dixie price than current levels. But if we can get this cross, then you would expect a recession to be underway. Certainly something to keep an eye on. And I'm seeing a lot of this, okay? It goes back to that idea about sentiment being beaten down for the miners. The same is true of gold. I'm seeing this chart doing the rounds at the moment. This is the price of gold denominated in Bitcoin slowly heading to zero, okay? But the thing I think we are missing here is there are extended periods of time where gold does better than Bitcoin. Overall, the long-term trend tells us that you would be better off holding Bitcoin, but if this thing is to start to reverse, then there will at least be a moment in time where holding gold will be better than holding Bitcoin. And I think personally, the writing is on the wall. Gold ripping another $30 to fresh all-time highs is signaling something big is coming. I've said this multiple times before, gold does not break out for no reason. Gold always knows something. And remember, all of this against a backdrop, okay, of a strong dollar and strong rates. The precious metal markets do not like either of those things. If the metal markets are gonna rally, you would typically expect to see a softening dollar and either a low interest rate environment or rate cuts underway. And we have neither of these things today. The metals are rallying, they are breaking out to new all-time highs in the face of a rising dollar and high interest rates. Again, this is starting to concern me. This is starting to signal perhaps that something big is coming. Is it the case that global economies are heading for disaster? Is that what gold knows? Like I said, gold always knows something. So heading into the charts, it is difficult for me to be bearish on the dollar. I know that people like David Hunter and Henrik are calling for a rollover, a nasty violent move down to below 90. That is entirely on the table. But first, we've got to invalidate this current breakout, okay? And as it stands, the more time we spend above the breakout, the more statistically significant it becomes. Like I said, it's hard for me to be bearish at the Dixie at the moment, since we are currently working on a bullish breakout. As always, if new data presents, if we see some sharp and violent reversal, 
I will pivot my stance. I will flip bearish as I am presented with that new data. But as it stands, okay, this is a bullish breakout. We are looking to confirm a slightly early but legally and qualifying three-year cycle low. And until we see some violent reversal, then I remain bullish on the DXY in the short to medium term. Gold is doing gold things, isn't it? So cycle lows again providing an edge and an alpha. We know we've got our next one coming up somewhere around the 18th of April timeframe. In the meantime, I expect this thing to continue to push higher. I'm noticing silver not quite getting the love it deserves at this moment in time, which kind of suggests the market doesn't quite believe this move in gold is for real. Now, all of that fits with the beaten down sentiment and the mocking and jeering of gold from the Bitcoin community I've been showing you earlier on, but make no mistake about it, how much higher has gold got to go before people start to say to themselves, multiple higher highs and higher lows, time to probably start to think about getting long the precious metal markets. And when they do, I believe silver and the miners are going to start to fly. The miners have already started to move up. Okay, so here's the senior miners. You can see they've got a little bit of work to do before a breakout. And for me personally, I think I'm going to start to increase my exposure, but I want to see some daily cycle lows show up first. So it's not about the price for me. It's about having a high probability setup. We'll find a pullback into a daily cycle low, look for that swing, and then we can add exposure, start to take the risk off and increase our exposure without taking additional risk as always. So the junior miners, however, starting to look an awful lot better, aren't they? So again, we're probably going to get this run up. It's probably more something like something like this. Some kind of run up, pull back into daily cycle low, and then I think I can look to increase my exposure there. Still no significant changes out of Bitcoin, but based on everything I've shown you, okay, tells me to keep an open mind about seeing higher prices walking forward. As I keep saying over and over again, unless we violate this upper slope and blue support line or come down and take out the prior cycle low, then I remain long and strong and bullish bias for Bitcoin. Of course, since I'm bullish buyers for Bitcoin, I'm expecting higher prices out of the miners walking forward. So we will see. Looks like they're going to get a little bit of a shakeout, which is pretty typical of a Monday morning. But as I said, the sentiment is really beaten down. I'm remaining bullish until I'm invalidated and stopped out as always. And the stock market probably also looking to rip higher until we can get closer to those daily and weekly cycle low timeframes. And then we can think about increasing exposure again. I don't want to be chasing this market higher this early, excuse me, this late in the cycle. And of course, we still have plenty of exposure via the Dow, which has exceeded all profit targets. Long and strong continue to push there. And of course, the Russell 2K, we still got exposure via the Russell and we'll continue to push this targeting well above 2,600 if we are indeed going to put in that blow off top and the melt up across the board. So what a start to a week. Purple tie means we pump as always. I'm your boy Camel. I hope you're doing well in life. And until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.